a global problem needing an American solution, an unrelenting present with a bold vision. Obstacles every foot of the way. You had landslides, you had explosions. 75% fled in fear of dying. Danger around every bend. Building one of the seven wonders of the modern world, the Panama Canal. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. For centuries, nations have tried and failed to find a shortcut between the Atlantic and the Pacific. It would save time, it would save lives, it would save money. But it would take American imagination, American industry, and yes, American guts, to finally pull it off. Panama at the dawn of the American century. The Isthmus of Panama was a mess. The French had tried to cut through the mountains and build a canal at sea level. It was a spectacular failure. The French effort was a very significant effort. It took reportedly up to 20,000 people who died through the effort and the bankruptcy of the largest company of, at its time. The part that really gets you as a civil engineer when you go down there to work is this French engineer cemetery. It's a cemetery just for their engineers. Thousands of them buried in this lonely cemetery out in the middle of Panama. These images might convince most leaders of the folly of such a project, but one famously daring American saw a challenge. Teddy Roosevelt was sort of the embodiment of the modern presidency in that he was able to sort of use the force of his will to get a lot of projects going. Roosevelt embraced the adage, speak softly and carry a big stick. And to him, the US Navy was that stick. He knew it would be even bigger if American warships had a quicker path between the two seas. Teddy Roosevelt was always uh, a person who appreciated Navy and the power projection by sea lines of communication. And so he was the kind of guy that would follow through. And if something hadn't been done before, that didn't scare him off much. Uh, he was willing to take risk. The American president was hungry for action, but Panama would not yield easily. There were three basic things challenges that you had to overcome. One is you have to excavate more than 500 vertical feet of mountain, which had never been done before anywhere in history, not even by the Egyptians. And two, you got to deal with this wild river that can fluctuate and flow much more dramatically than anything in North America that we had seen. And then you have the whole issue with building something in a deadly jungle with all sorts of disease and pestilence and lack of sanitation, and it's scary. The wild Chagres River cut across the path of the canal. Instead of fighting it, they would use it. Well, the American solution that's taming the Chagres River was to build the largest dam the world had ever seen up to that point. And um, that dam was the key, you know, the, the cornerstone of the whole project. The dam would create a massive reservoir 90 feet above the Atlantic and Pacific. This would eliminate the need to cut a sea level canal if Roosevelt could get ships up to it. He dusted off an idea to build an elevated canal and elevate the ships using a series of locks. A lock system is a series of independent chambers in a stair step formation. As each chamber fills with water, it raises the ship to the next level. A lock uses water as a tool. The modern design of a lock is attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. So we've been using water as a means of travel for centuries. So Roosevelt's canal plan was set. Build a giant dam to create the world's largest man-made lake build a colossal system of locks to raise boats up to that lake, carve an eight-mile pass through the mountains, and build another lock system to bring the boats back down the other side. 
Of course, not in human history had a project so ambitious ever succeeded. The Panama Canal at its time was the largest construction project and remains up to date one of the largest construction projects in history. The scale was simply incredible. It was like nothing that had been attempted before. But in Panama, the unprecedented engineering challenges were only part of the problem. Remember all those French headstones? Most succumbed to disease. Panama was known as a very deadly place. 75% of all the Americans working on the canal had fled in fear of dying. So Roosevelt turned to a chief engineer with a track record for solving complex engineering problems, John Stevens. When he first got there, in one week, he went from the Atlantic side to the Pacific side, and he saw that he really had a problem with taking care of these guys and letting them know that, no, we're not going to let malaria and yellow fever kill you. We're going to do everything we can. He actually was the hero of the working man on the project. Stevens wasted no time in targeting the region's biggest killer, mosquitoes. And his secret weapon was Dr. William Gorgas, a man whose groundbreaking link between the mosquito and deadly disease had already made an impact in the region. Malaria was being transmitted by mosquitoes, and you want to eradicate the malaria and other mosquito-borne diseases, and so that meant spraying any kind of ponds or puddles with standing water, trying to drain the standing water that exists. Dr. Gorgas wiped out yellow fever on the isthmus. The last case was reported in Panama City in 1905. Eradicating the disease was the essential first step in the American effort uh, in the Panama Canal. And so it was really the miracle that allowed the canal to then be built. William Crawford Gorgas, he was the right guy at the right time to make what probably was the greatest contribution of America to world health, no doubt about it. The mosquitoes were gone, but Panama was not ready for the massive workforce that was coming. When Stevens comes in there, the workforce is only, you know, around four to 6,000 people. The last two years, it's 45,000 people. So Stevens set to work transforming the canal zone. Stevens looked at everything in terms of, you know, what can I do to have a high esprit de corps, have a high uh, morale. And so they actually built a YMCA, like clubs, where the single men could go to in the evenings and they could read, they could play the piano, they could shoot billiards. He saw all these other things you could do that were really critical in the long run to getting a stabilized workforce. In addition to the social clubs and bowling alleys, Stevens upgraded the railroad. Stevens was all about efficiency. And he takes on the railroad and rebuilds the whole railroad because he says, I need two lines. I need a westbound line and I need an eastbound line. And that was the first thing he did. And Roosevelt's getting mad because, he, you know, how much are you digging? How much are you digging? First six months, he's not digging anything. Stevens had laid the groundwork for success. But Roosevelt was growing frustrated with the lack of measurable progress. And the headstrong president was about to stir the pot. 